Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1232, the little twist panel pop-up, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. Now you may be wondering how does the little twist panel differ from our original twist panel pop-up? And the primary difference is size. So the twist panel pop-up is designed to be used in an A2 top fold card or larger. The little twist panel pop-up is a miniature version of that other die where you can actually double it and use it in a slimline card. This die set is big. It has 18 pieces, so many that they wouldn't all fit on my usual 5x7 magnet sheet and I had to add an extra strip. I'm going to start with the mechanism die, which is the biggest piece in the set. I'm going to die cut that twice out of a medium weight cardstock, and I am using my Spellbinders Platinum 6, but you can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die. Now you choose your card size, but I did mention that this is a slimline friendly design, so for the video today I will make a slimline card. So I started with a piece of cardstock 8.5 inches wide by 7 inches tall and scored it in the middle for folding. And that's just going to make that standard top fold slimline card. The little twist panel is a glue-in design, so I will end up gluing these inside the card after I've worked the folds. And my concept is to then add pattern paper that will cover up the majority of those bases, but I can only bring that pattern paper up to where those arms are. So that I'll have something pretty underneath once I've folded up the arms, then I've gone ahead and added some one inch by eight inch pieces of pattern paper inside the card just butted up next to the fold. Okay, let's talk about training the folds in these mechanisms. So what I like to do is fold on a diagonal towards myself, like a valley fold. Then I'm just going to shift it and do the other diagonal, again, towards myself like a valley fold. So all of those X folds are valleys. And then the arms are mountains. So if I pinch those mountain folds as I'm closing up the card, then that's all there is to it. It's just those two arms have mountain folds and there's valleys at the bottom. Okay, another way you could do it would be to work the mountain first, which means back fold the card so that you get the mountains, then open it back up, and then again, go on the diagonal one way, on the diagonal the other way, and then again, you've got those mountains, they fold into the piece. All right, these bases are now ready to be glued inside the card. And for the purposes of alignment, I like to temporarily reverse the folds in the arms so that instead of mountain folds, they're valleys. And what that allows me to do is actually just set that mechanism right down into the fold of the card, lining up the fold in the middle. Now the glue's just going to go in the flat area, meaning the kind of triangle area and then the big rectangle. And I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. And we do sell both of those items on our website. Now the goal here is to get that center line perfectly aligned over the center fold of the card. And there's even a hole in the mechanism where you can look down through and make sure that you see the fold line through it and then I'm just going to press that down to the card. Now I'm attempting to put two of these in a slimline card, and so that's why I have it positioned over to the left, only about a quarter of an inch or so away from the edge, so that I do have room for two. After the first side is in, then I can fold in half to get access to the other side, and again, I'm adding the glue to kind of the triangle area and the rectangle, but I'm avoiding the arms with adhesive because those do need to raise up in the air. One nice thing about using glue is that if you get it crooked, you sometimes do have a chance to peel it up and make it so it's not quite so crooked. So fixing that up so that it's straight. Now what I want to do is reverse those folds again so that they're mountains again. And then I can fold the card. Those arms will fold inward. And you can see how that black pattern paper is going to peek out from underneath those arms. Okay, I'm gonna speed this up a little bit to do the other side because it's exactly the same. I reverse the folds temporarily. I add adhesive all over one side and get it aligned inside the card. Then I can fold in the middle to get access to the other side and press it to the other side again, trying to make sure that that is straight. Then once it's in there, I can reverse the mountain folds again so that they come up into the card as the card is closed. If you are planning on adding the decorative rectangles to the ends of the arms, then the best practice is to have at least an inch and a half between the mechanisms so those rectangles don't crash into each other in the center. My pattern paper strips are eight inches long by two and a half inches tall, and I'm using some Echo Park Wedding Collection paper. 
and I'm just bringing that paper up to cover all of the flat areas of the mechanisms, basically just coming up to where the arms are. There is a die in the set that will cut the panels, and I need two of them, so I've cut through two layers of pattern paper at one time. And the center two panels, there are slots, so I'm going to get out the paper in those slots if, it, if it's stuck in there. Okay, there are four panels on each of these sets, so that means three fold lines that should be worked like an accordion. So valleys on the outer two and a mountain in the middle. And then I just repeat that for the other one. So a mountain in the middle, valleys on the ends. To decorate those inner two panels, there is a set of matching small rectangles in the set that will cut a piece that fits those inner panels and leaves a shadow. The slots are to animate the optional fishtail banner. So if you do not plan to use the banner, you can just glue those decorator rectangles right over the top of the slots and then that will cover them up. So if you're just planning on having a flat panel set and not have that extra bit of pop-up in it, you can do it this way. If you do plan to use the fishtail banner, then you can just build it right through your panel set, or if you want that panel set to be decorated with other pieces of pattern paper, you can go back to the die that cuts the set of four panels. And you just have to make sure your pattern paper is over the center two panels. So it doesn't have to be the whole panel set, it just needs to be the center two. Now I'm going to cut out those smaller rectangles from those panels that have the slots in them. So I can either do that by using both dies or I can fold my one piece in half and just cut through both layers with one die. So I'm just going to tape that in place so it doesn't move. So now I have two decorative rectangles to fit my center pieces, but they have the slots in them so that I can still add the fishtail banner. So that's how you would do it if you want to have both decorator paper over the top of your center sections, but still use the fishtail banner. The die set includes two matching fishtail banner halves, so you're going to cut each of those once to make one banner. And then the way this works is that it has these notches in it and the tabs at the end. So the first thing you would do would be to work the fold at the base of the tab, and that's going to be a valley fold, meaning you're folding that tab towards yourself. The fishtail banner can be cut out of any weight paper or cardstock. If you're using a lighter weight, you may be able to actually just wiggle it into the slot by just kind of going back and forth until it gets down to the notches. However, I'm using cardstock, so I'm finding that too difficult to do. So I'm going to fold on the perforated line on the side across from the tab. So not the tab side, but the other side. That allows me to get the notch easily in the slot and then unfold to lock it into place. And then I do the same thing on the other side. So I'm just going to fold on the perforated line on the side that doesn't have the tab. Then I'm going to get the tab end in until it's the notches in the slot. And then I'm going to unfold on the back side. And then that will lock that half of the fishtail banner into place. Okay, then on the back you can see that you've got the two tabs. And they will sit side by side, each one connecting to the other half of the banner. So I like a strong glue for that. Just getting the glue underneath those tabs and pinching them until they attach the two banner halves together. Then I can carefully close the panel set. If any either of my tabs pops up, I can just go in and squeeze it and pinch it, give it a good pinch in the closed position. So just another bit of interactive fun on that die set, completely optional. You can either leave it as its own decoration or you can start adding items to it for another layer of the pop-up. The die set includes four different shaped little banners, and I've cut those out of different matching cardstocks, including a glitter cardstock. Now, a really good way to string banners like this is to use either just a needle threader, like you see here, and I'm just using some baker's twine and my needle threader to get it through the holes. Or you can add some glue to the end of your twine and just push it through like a needle tip. Or one of my favorite tools is to use these little flosser tools that you just get at the grocery store in the toothpaste aisle, because those you can actually go through several holes at once. Okay, so I have strung four banners, one of each shape, onto a piece of baker's twine, and then I'm going to use that to decorate the panel set that does not have the fishtail banner in it. So I'm piercing holes just outside of the pattern paper decoration in those inner panels, and then I'm stringing the ends of my twine through. I like to glue down the outer two banners just so that they can't drift over the folds. 
and for the ends of the twine, I glue them down on the back and then snip off any excess. The rest of the panel decorations I'm going to do after installing these in the card. So what I want to do is on my pop-up base, I'm looking for the corners, the upper left and the lower right. And there's a little notch there to indicate where your adhesive needs to stop. So it's basically the square corner. You can see it's got a squared off end and then there's a little notch. So that's where my adhesive needs to stop. And I need to, to keep that adhesive on the side that has the square corner. So I'm not going to drift over the fold and onto the other side. And I'm just indicating that by just drawing axis with a white colored pencil. You certainly don't have to do that, but that's just for the purposes of the video so that you can see where the adhesive is going to go. So now I'm going to add my glue where I've added those X's. So just on the square corner side, stopping when I get to the notch, and then that's going to correspond to the upper left corner of my panel set. So I just want to line up those two edges. It's very easy to do and just pinch that until it sets up. If you don't want to sit there and hold it, you can use something like a small quilting clip to hold that in place while the glue sets up. That allows me to move on to my other corner. So again, I'm going to add my strong adhesive all over that arm, stopping when I get to the notch and the fold, and then just take the corner of my panel set and line it up onto that adhesive. And again, I can either pinch that and hold it until it sets up, or I can use my clips. Okay, I'm gonna speed things up to show that same exact process on the other side. So the adhesive goes, in the corner that has the X's, stopping when I get to the notch, and then just lining up the corner of the panel set with the corner of the arm. And again, clips can be really helpful. The first time that I close this card, I want to go slowly, and I love to have my hands really close to the card fold in the back. And that way I'm kind of closing it almost from the center, and that really helps it learn those twists. But I may have to reach in there and give it a little help. Just to learn that twist the first time, I can give it a good press in the closed position, and then it should start working on its own. Now, a sturdy card is an important component to a good little twist panel card, so you do want that card itself to be very sturdy. What I've decided to do for decorator rectangles is to use the one that cuts a swoopy hill with scalloped edges. That perfectly fits over the larger scalloped rectangle. Then that'll give that kind of swoopy hill look across the piece. Then I'm going to put the small rectangle over the top of that piece and cut it into two pieces. Then I have those rounded rectangles that are going to be the base of my decoration, so then I can glue the frame that I've just created down first, then fill the inner part with glue and put the matching small rectangle in the middle. Then I just repeat that process until I have four of them. One is going to glue to each of the outer panels of the pop-up. So I add my adhesive all over the pop-up in that panel, then I want to get the rectangle in there centered top to bottom and then just butt it up to the fold. And then moving on to the next one, I add my adhesive again all over the panel. Just want to get that rectangle in there centered top to bottom and then butt it right up next to the fold. And then once again, keeping my hands close to the center fold when I close it that first time, just to make sure that it learns that twist with those rectangles in place. Okay, speeding things up to add the final two rectangles. Once again, I'm just gonna add my glue all over those panels, get the rectangles centered top to bottom and then butted right up next to the fold. And then my first time closing it after getting rectangles attached, I make sure that I'm closing from the center and just kind of going slowly. Now, mine's operating really nicely, but sometimes the corners of the rounded rectangles might come down and kind of, you know, crash into the card a little bit and not sure what to do. So you can always give those corners that are hitting the card first just a little bend. And you can do that with a bone folder or you can just do that with your fingers. However, you kind of want to train the corners of that rectangle to where when it hits the card, it'll slide into the closed position. So just a small little bend on the corners can accomplish that. Any of our charm or animal sets are going to fit really nicely on the little twist panel. And so for my project, I'm using our dolled up charms. And there is an assembly video for that die set. I'll link it at the end of this video. With our charm sets, they do include a little hole where you can dangle the charms off of a pop-up. But if you want to use them as standalone elements, then you can just trim those holes off. 
Our specialty is definitely pop-up dies, but we do have a lot of cool decorator dies, and those can be used along with the pop-ups to be able to craft a card start to finish using just dies. So you don't have to, I mean, you certainly can, our dies work great with all of your stamp sets, but you don't have to stamp everything and color it and things to make a great card. You can do that by layering dies. So I debated about putting anything on the back wall of my card because the pattern paper was so pretty and really filled the space, but I decided just to add a couple rows of banners in the inside corners of my card. And I'm doing that now where I can poke holes and bring the twine to the front of the card before I've added the decoration to the front. So I usually always start with the insides of my pop-up cards, and then I do the outside as kind of a simple lead-in. And then we have a great nested shape set called Long Rectangles Crosshatch, where the largest rectangle is perfectly sized for a slimline card, and then it goes down from there. And I'm using the two smallest rectangles in the set layering them together along with a greeting, my friend from our word set one. And the small heart after the word friend, that came out of those same dolled up charms. When I placed those back wall banners, I placed them up real high. And then for this rectangle greeting, I'm going to place it low because of course I want to avoid any catch points with my pop-up. Those twist panels need to be able to slide down against the card and not catch on anything. My favorite way to make card fronts for my pop-up cards is just to take my leftover materials and craft a simple lead-in with repeated elements. I don't like to overthink it or do too much extra design. So I've got that long rectangles crosshatch as my base. The fishtail banners that are in the glitter are cut out of that same set. Then I've layered up those rectangles out of the little twist panel, added some of my dolled up charms, and then for a greeting I'm using our big script hello die. And then I glue my finished card front to the front of the card. That long rectangle is just a little bit smaller than a standard slimline card. That will also cover up all of that twine from where I attached the banners inside. And here is my finished card. It's just a standard slimline, so I can use that number 10 business envelope. This one may require that extra ounce stamp, though, because it is pretty thick with all those layers on top of each other, as well as that sturdy cardstock that I chose. I love this die set because it is versatile, it's generic, you know, you can put it together in different ways, whether you're going to add that extra fishtail banner or not, whether you're going to put two side by side in a card or whether you're just going to use one, you know, you decide your colors, you decide your styling. The packaging card is similar to the one I made today, two side by side in a slim line, this time decorated with our sea charms. Here's a hello card, double little twist panel with those sea charms. For this single little twist panel in a birthday theme, I swapped out and used labels on the pop-up instead of the rectangles. I love to end assembly videos with some inspiration from our very talented design team. Suzanne with a thank you from the bottom of my heart double little twist panel. And then here's one by Sandy, also with an underwater theme. And notice that she's put items all over the fishtail banners as well to get more layers to her pop-up. Sandy really shows off all of the layers that you can achieve with this die set in this butterfly card, and she's added those three-dimensional butterflies from our butterfly collage add-ons set. Another one by Sandy with a beach theme, kind of vintage style with all of those layers. Here's an adorable double little twist panel Easter card from Jen Webster using our spring animals and Easter charms. Here's a card by Lois using the space charms. So you're really getting a sense on how all of our different charm and animal sets will fit so nicely on this die set. Here's another one by Lois, this time using the good luck charms. Nikki has made a couple of great cards featuring our charms on the little twist panel. This first one is a birthday card using the big birthday charms, and then a holiday card featuring our happy hour charms. Our brand plays real nice with others, and those of you who are stampers, you will love the little twist panel for being able to show off your stamp collection, and you can see that in these two cards by Fran. Or you could do a hybrid card, like this card by Frances, where she's used the sea charms for the embellishments and then went to her stamp collection for a greeting. Another example of that in this card by Lois, where the sea charms and the beach borders and the labels, all of those are dyes, then her greeting is stamped. 
you certainly don't have to double your little twist panel. You can just use a single one in a card size of your choosing. Here's a cute one by Suzanne Smith where she's had the little twist panel appear to be coming out of an envelope. Here's a card by Sue Small Kreider, Happy Valentine's Day. And she hasn't added any rectangles to her panel set. It's just that little small panel set and then a three-dimensional heart from our heart collage pop-up. I love this Happy Father's Day card by Frances Byrne where she's added a ruler paper to the fishtail banners. On this Bright and Happy Thinking of You card by Karen Aiken, she's really let the pattern paper take center stage on that pop-up. It's amazing how different the action seems when you turn it into a portrait card like Karen Aiken did, and then instead of adding the panel set, she just added her decorator rectangles right to the arms, and it just looks completely different. And then finally, a wonderful single here by Nikki Foden, Happy Valentine's Day, using our love charms. The little twist panel pop-up die set is available now at a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as from our website, karenberniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com, where you can purchase these dies as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.